All right, um, so today we're gonna be sculpting both the face and the hair. Um, and eh, it's not too difficult. All right, so the most important thing with this is you wanna make sure that your image is lined up completely with your model. Um, right here, I'm selecting all the faces I want the hair to be extruded from. And uh, when you first extrude it, it's going to kind of look like a bowl cut, and it usually looks like a bowl cut <laughs> most of the time. So um, just darken, uh, just uh, fill all the faces in with the material the color you want. Um, and then I like to merge, at least because she's wearing a bun, I like to merge all of the vertices back to the head so it looks so it kind of seamlessly blends. Um, and then I decided it wasn't quite low enough to look realistic. And eventually I just decided to merge it to the vertice layer below it. Then I checked to see if the um I checked to see if the coat was intercepting any of the vertices. Just gotta make sure everything is, you know, sculpted properly. Uh, then I filled in all of the under, all of the under uh, faces that I missed before, and I'm just kind of sculpting and shaping the bangs, making sure that they kind of wrap around the head, and I'm filling in any faces I might have missed because you will be able to tell. And I want to make sure that I, that the ear isn't going through the hair at all. Alright, so I loop cut before and I extruded her uh, side hair hangies. <laughs> and then I loop cut it and that and gave it a little bit of shape. And I decided I needed to clean up the area where the bun will be, so I uh, cleaned it up a bit and then I loop cut it to make it rounder. And then I selected the face and I extruded it on the Z axis. Or rather, just straight out. And then I loop cut it twice, and I just kind of shaped it so that it looked nice and round. And then I decided that they were a bit big, and so you see me kind of fiddling with the shape of the hair just to make it look more appealing. And all the while I'm looking at the left hand side to make sure that the silhouette is exactly how I want it to be. Just fixing a few vertices. And then um, I noticed that I forgot to fill in some faces, which will happen. It's okay. Just fill them in. And then I also noticed that the bun was not quite round enough, so I'm just going to push and pull a little bit. And then rotate it, because it felt, didn't feel quite right to me at the time. Okay, just fixing it a little bit more. Um, at this part, I thought I saw some problems, and if you want to split up anything that's been uh, combined at the center, just go back into your modifier and uncheck clipping. Um, I decided that it was too complex to fix, so I decided to just merge everything at the center, which is my like go-to. This is a lot of vertices method. Then I loop cut and I colored where her ribbons would be red. All right. Um, next, I decided that I wanted to give the bangs a little bit of variety, and I realized that the forehead was gone underneath it, so I decided to hide all of the bangs and fix that. So I took a single vertice and extruded it on the Z, and then I selected all of the vertices around it and made a face. Um, so I kind of like mocked her forehead, because when we were extruding before, we extruded the literal face, so there's nothing there anymore, so now we have to create that if we want to put anything underneath it, or would rather if we're cutting anything out of the bangs, we're going to need forehead underneath it. So I pressed Alt-H to bring it back. And I'm going to start cutting out uh, small pieces of bangs. Um, and I'm sorry about any extra noise. Oh, that would be my roommates. Um. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm just pushing and pulling. Uh, it's a good thing, it's good to remember that anything you do will be mirrored on the other side at this point. Um, you can change that later, but just be aware of that whenever you're making something so it doesn't look too repeated and mechanical. And now I'm just kind of 
mm, pushing and pulling so that it looks good to me. I thought it was, I thought it was a good idea to make a second cut, but then I realized it looked a little bit too repeated. Um, so I just decided to omit it. All right. So now I'm deciding it looks pretty good. The I'm just gonna extend the hair a little bit, make it a bit bigger, make it fit a little bit better on the head, and then I decide to fill in the bangs because I realized I left that blank. So I just vertex selected the three points and pressed F. Um, and when I'm making models, I like to extend the ears a lot because I think it's kind of cute. Um, Feel free not to do that, that's just my personal preference. Alright, so now I'm going to start doing the face, and to do that I want to make sure I hide all elements of the hair so it doesn't get in the way. So I select them all and press H, and I just get rid of them. And you can see in the left it's still there, but it's just hidden. Um, I like to color the ears and the cheeks of my models pink, so that's what I'm doing now. I select the ears, and I'm making a new material with the color of the, the ears, and I'm just pressing a sign. You can see it happening over there in the left hand side. Now I'm uh, shaping the cheeks in the way that the faces will be. I don't want them to be squares because, I don't know, it, it doesn't look too natural. So I like to loop cut them and give them some roundness. Alright, and you gotta make, uh, be careful that your model doesn't flatten out while you're changing things from the front. Um, always make sure you're looking at the side when you're doing details like that, because it's very easy for things to get convoluted and kind of gross looking. Alright, here comes the hard work. So what I do is I literally just outline my drawing with the knife cut tool. I try and keep the number of vertices simple because the more you have, the more of a problem it is. And then I just fill in the base eye color, which I fiddled around with a bit until I found one I liked. And then I add the eyelashes by kind of outlining the end of the eye. See, this is the problem I was talking about where you need to watch from all sides especially on the facial features because <clears throat> it will just look strange from different angles. So I fill in the eyelashes and then I start to add the iris, well the people at this point. I sh then I'm, here's where I'm adding the white of the eye, which I have a little bit of difficulty with. This color didn't seem light enough to me so I made a new one. And now I'm just kind of shaping the iris so it doesn't look so silly. A little bit more natural, as natural as this can look. This is my special method for creating details and eyes and features and stuff. And It's not the best method, but if you're not doing rigorous like eye work, eh, I think it's easy and it's fun. It's a lot like drawing. fiddling with it a bit more. I decided to add some bottom eyelashes and so I just outline the white and I add a little bit of black and I extend it a bit. Um, another thing I like to do is I like to extrude a part of it just like with the clothing. Um, this way the eyelashes look like they have some shape and some three-dimensionality three and I just merge the bottom half of the eyelashes back to the eye so there's like a seamless transition and the top I leave extruded so that from the side you can see that there are eyelashes that come off of her eye. And I make them black. And at this point the eye is starting to look kind of collapsed and caved in so I decided to fix it up and give it some roundness. I decided the whites of the eyes were a little bit too white, because eye whites are not usually as white as you think they are. 
All right, so I have the nose. Remember the mirror modifier is on, so you only have to do half of it. Um, just kind of lowering it and pressing in where the nose bridge would be until it's a shape that I like. Always watching the left hand side while working on the right. Then I just kind of cut in the mouth. I'm just kind of giving her a chin a little bit, kind of just fixing up some of where the neck is meeting the head because it doesn't look quite right to me. And so I kind of added another loop cut just to give it some, just a little bit more roundness. Roundness is always good with low poly. Because round is cute. Just kind of, I feel, I realize she looks a little bit dazed and a little too uncertain, so I'm kind of giving her some attitude by lowering her upper lashes can't really tell because the bangs are there at the moment, but we'll fix that. Um, adding the eye shine is always a little bit difficult with mirror modifier because they look really silly if you're not careful. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring up the, uh, the bangs a little bit. And I uh, realized that the bangs were merged with the eye later on. Um, and the way I fix that is I just, well, I haven't done it yet, but I kind of just selected the face that was colored, and I made it the color of the skin. I'm also uh, scaling down the bangs, that way they don't seem quite so protrusive and thick. And then I realize she still looks kind of silly, so I'm gonna push and pull her eyes a bit up. Um, and she's getting there, slowly but surely. Just wanna make her little bang cut a little more obvious. And let's see. Just kind of shaping her pupil a bit more. The eyes are super important. I'm also, now I'm gonna give her some elbow, some finger, and some knee coloring, because I really like how that looks when it's flushed in pink. So I'm going to give her a rounded elbow. And then I decided to color all her fingers pink. And I realized it looked a little bit too intense, so I actually created a new material with a lighter pink, and I assigned it. And I decided that was too light, so I colored the entire thing the darker pink. And then I Excuse me, I colored the whole thing the lighter pink, and then I made her fingers the darker pink, so it made sort of a very, like, a gradation. And then for the final thing, I added a third uh, joint, which would happen in real life, and then I made that the color of the skin, so the gradation looked the smoothest to me. And then I gave her some knees, <laughs> like she didn't have them before, <laughs> but now clearly she has them because they're pink. getting pretty close to being done here. I just kind of um, am adding a few little helping bits. Just kind of extruded the boot a bit to give it some three-dimensionality. Just kind of fixing the hair final time. And now I'm comparing the coat with the model and just kind of giving it one last shape run over. This part's really not that necessary, but I like to just check things one last time. I really, I thought that the coat needed to be a little bit wider, so I did, extended it. And I have one last video where I show you how to join the objects and just kind of finish up. So join me then.